so actually right out of college, um, I was offered an opportunity to coach at a nonprofit organization. Uh, my mentor was Tina Sloan Green, and she was the founder and president of the Black Women in Sports Foundation. And essentially what the program does is allows people to coach and teach non-traditional sports. So like soccer, fencing, mm -hmm. lacrosse. Yeah. And for me, like I, other than basketball, like I, I hadn't played any of those sports. So yeah. she gave me a platform to be able to learn the nuances of sport. So all of the skills that you need to learn to play the game, right? Mm -hmm. And so throughout that experience, I developed a love for teaching. And when I graduated college, I knew like, if I wasn't gonna play basketball, I knew that I was gonna teach in some way, yeah. but I didn't know everything that was involved, right? My undergraduate degree was sociology. So it was nothing about teaching at all. And um, as I got, you know, the experience of teaching, I developed a love for it. And I was like, okay, I'm actually naturally good at being able to control a room, right? I'm naturally good at teaching things and, and breaking things down. Yeah. So I knew that I would teach right out of college, but I didn't know the journey of what that could look like. But because of uh, relationships, my dad had um, a friendship with the woman, Tina Sloan Green, who was the founder. And I was like, well, dad, I need a job out of the college, you know, how can you support me in that way? And so he reached out because he knew, um, you know, the relationship that he had. So with that program, I was able to teach, I was able to learn, you know, how to break down skills. And with that, that was the, the coaching journey. And because of my relationship, and I did a really good job uh, at that foundation, I was able to, you know, make connections and, and find a student teaching job right at a school called Germantown Friends School, which is a um, private school in the greater Philadelphia area. So once I got that job, I got a student teaching position. And then that was my first basketball coaching experience. That was the journey of coaching basketball. So it's funny that I went to, you know, I was in college. I got a scholarship at Stony Brook to play basketball. And then right out of college, right? Like I didn't coach at all. And typically people either become like graduate assistants or, right? Or they like, you know, they immediately go to their like local high school and, and help with coaching. But my first job was, was something that didn't even involve basketball. And I think that allowed me to develop a true appreciation for sports mm -hmm. and teaching. So with that, you know, I, I kind of got my experience there and that's what really started the journey of coaching basketball. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your, your business then. Yeah. So we are, we're pro bound training. Uh, we are a youth basketball training and development program in the greater Philadelphia area. Um, and we really focus on both the mental side of basketball, right? Like, and we really specialize in performance in general, because you can learn all of the skills for basketball, but if you don't connect all of the things that allow you to perform, which is really your your mental part of the game, like it, it's hard to perform well. Yeah. So if you think about everything involved in a game, it's dealing with pressure, right? Um, it's dealing with adversity. It's being able to not hesitate when you get the ball. It's being confident, right? And a lot of like today, what a lot of kids struggle with is confidence. So we really kind of, you know, teach, okay, these are the things that are involved with performing from a skill perspective. Mm -hmm. But in order to apply that and translate that, you have to learn the mental part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of my other mentors told me, you know, when you start training, because it's so prevalent, you have to specialize in something, yeah. right? You have to find a niche. So for me, um, I knew that teaching, like I said, was one of the things that came easy to me. And so when I thought about ProBound, I wanted it to be bigger than just me. And so how, how can we be able to, as a now community, I have three other coaches, like how can we as a program be able to still 
specialize mm -hmm. in something? How do we, with the million training programs that exist, how can we separate ourselves? And so we really developed a community. We have kids from all, you know, parts of the city. Um, yeah. We have kids from in, from the city, from the suburbs of, of Philly. Um, and so we really, really stress the importance of mental training, particularly too in this time frame, right? Where like kids are on their phones, they're not communicating <laughs> with each other, right? Mm -hmm. um and I know that sports was a thing that that changed my life and so we as former you know collegiate basketball players uh we all know the importance of sport and we know like you know all the the levels that you'll get to from a mental perspective when mm -hmm. playing the game right mm -hmm. it's, it's it's so many highs and lows to basketball so how yeah. do we teach players how to you know, sort of go through those highs and lows with confidence mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the ability to, like I said, perform at a high level mm -hmm. through those experiences. That's awesome. So would you say uh, the con confidence aspect of, of what you guys do, is that something that you struggled with as an athlete? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm 5'3". I know it doesn't look like it on camera, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing, but... I'm sure. And that was definitely a struggle for me personally, because um, it stopped my ability to go to certain schools. Like mm -hmm. there were schools locally who said I wouldn't be able to play at a division one level. I, I didn't get recruited. Uh, so for me, it really got in the way of my confidence from, you know, a, a college perspective, from a collegiate perspective. But basketball was something that always always knew had my back, right? Mm -hmm. Like I always knew basketball would be there. And because I practiced so much, um, because I put so much time in, I think that helped me develop my confidence in the game because I put so much time in. I literally just had a conversation with uh, my kids in, in at the camp today. And I was like, our, our talk, our mental talk was about confidence. Mm -hmm. and 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 how you really get that and you really get it from yourself yeah so I told them the story of how um at recess when I was young at recess I would always have a ball around me mm -hmm. and I would go to different kids and like cross them up just to meet people <laughs> that was my way of connection meeting mm -hmm. people was like hey you want to play basketball let me cross you up and like yeah. get some oohs and ahs because yeah. I know once I get the way of the crowd or people that's the way I can make connections mm -hmm. you know um mm -hmm. so yeah to answer your question that that was a way for me to to basketball was my confidence it was my way to really develop ultimately who I am today mm -hmm. love that so where where does the name Probound come from why did yeah. you choose that name yeah because everyone's not going to play professionally right the majority of people in basketball, there's statistics, right? They're available to us. Like, you know, at some point, someone's going to stop at high school. Some people may stop at college. Some people mm -hmm. may stop, you know, in middle school. They just want to play for fun. Yeah. So for us, program means like we want to prepare you for life beyond the sport, mm -hmm. right? So think of everything that involves being professional, being on time, being a great communicator, being personable, uh, right? Like all of those things that require us to be professional. Mm -hmm. And so as initially people thought pro bound meant like, okay, this means we train and we go pro. Mm -hmm. No, you go pro in life, right? Like we teach you all of the things that you need to be successful in mm -hmm. life professionally. And ultimately uh, we're preparing them for their second job. So it's like, you know how the first job you were like at Rita's, you really didn't have need to have that many skills, right? But like as a professional, your second job is like, like I said, you have to have the interpersonal skills. Yeah. You gotta know teamwork, you gotta know how to collaborate, time mm -hmm. management, like everything that you learn through sport, right? We're mm -hmm. developing you to be great at that. So if you know how to perform well in the court, you know how to perform well in life, right? So that's yeah. the whole idea. That's where the name came from. Um, you know, that's the meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives us, right, every day is because we know what we're training our kids for. 
outside oh. of basketball. Yeah. 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 Love that. So you've recently uh, achieved a huge goal with your business. So talk talk to us a little bit and talk to the audience about when you started the business, what, what's been your biggest struggle or what was your biggest obstacle and how did you reach your, your ultimate goal, which, which you've achieved recently? So yeah. first of all, tell us, tell the audience what the goal was yeah. and then tell us a bit about like the biggest obstacle you faced at the beginning and how you sure. got to the goal. Yeah. So thanks to the community. Um, I just re reached my 100K financial goal. Uh, and the challenge and struggle initially was, th first of all, I'll be nine years in business, right? So think about that too, for people like either just starting or also have the same challenge of like hitting their financial goals. It does take time for some people, right? Like it may take them two years, three years, but for me, uh, I'll say the obstacle and then the difference. The mm -hmm. obstacle was, you know, one is getting my name out there and retaining athletes. Like I would get people in from like referrals and things of that nature, but retaining them was always a struggle. Like I would see them because our model was set up like drop-ins. We would do drop-ins, a lot of private training, um, but we didn't structure it in a way where we could really see the development over time. And so if parents or kids are dropping in, they don't really see the value. And it's really hard to create a customized training program for each kid. So they're not, we're not going to be able to follow them and really see their development over time, um, really make sure they have an adequate plan for performing and to get results. So if you don't have a plan mm -hmm. and they're just dropping in, they don't see the value, so they won't stay. And so that was one of the biggest things for us is like, you know, getting our name out there, getting people to come in. And then when they come in, how do they stay? So that was a huge challenge. And then, you know, the change was definitely one mentorship. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But mentorship was the key to just have a little bit more clarity of the model that we want to create within a business and um, clarity and how to retain athletes how to get them to stay and and how to create a program where that happens right so that was really the difference was that um and then another thing that really helped was um getting on the phone <laughs> with mm -hmm. parents being personable and yeah. you know really creating a plan for each and every athlete. And for someone who is just doing it on their own, that may sound really hard, but it, there's ways now and resources where you have virtual assistants, you have Fiverr, you have Upwork, like you have so many um, ways to outsource for if they, if you want people to do calls, sales calls and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So there's so many resources for us now, more so than it was before for me, like, we started 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there wasn't as many resources out there as they are now. So being able to utilize those, you know, those resources to help you um, can really expedite the process. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so that was, that was the biggest struggle. That was the thing that helped us just kind of really restructuring our model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, how has your business changed since, since being part of a, our our coaching program yeah so we we have people who are you know invested in our program over a long period of time so that was the biggest change was like we have folks that are on three months six mm -hmm. months to a year mm -hmm. um you know contracts and what that does is again not only it, it helps us to keep them for a long time but it helps us to make a clear plan for their athlete and the parents can visually see and with the kids, they'll ultimately see results, right? Like if there's no results, there's no business. So it's very important to, to give as much value. And I think the coaching community has really helped us generate ideas of, of what that value could look like and how we could even be more creative and how we can, you know, 
be different than the programs that exist and really stand out, mm -hmm. right? It's just the value that we provide versus just training. Like, I think the training is great, but what else can we do for our kids to really, really help them? Because all kids are different, right? The way they receive information, uh, you know, the way they're motivated, kids are very, are different. They range from so many different um, spectrums. So for us, it's important to, to make sure that we are training each and every individual Right. And really understanding them as players, as people to really help them to add value and, and give results. Mm -hmm. Love that. So a lot of basketball coaches that will probably be watching this will be thinking that in their head, getting to 100K per year is impossible. Uh, so so talk to us a little bit. What what does it take to get to that to that mark with your business? Yeah, yeah it's it's having a plan. Mm hmm having a plan and having a mentor who has done the same thing and who can essentially give you shortcuts yep. because you're going to waste your time, you know, researching and, and, and making mistakes that someone has probably, you know, you avoid those mistakes because someone more than likely has done it before, particularly too now, because it's so prevalent that there are tons of coaches, tons of people running sports businesses that you can learn from. And a lot of people are scared to invest, right? They're scared, they're, like if they look at a number and they're like, this is how much it costs to get mentorship, I don't wanna do it. But if we think of the value that we will receive, the investment that we put out, we'll, we will 10X that, right? Or make it right back. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can't be really stuck on the monetary part of mentorship. We have to think about the value. Yeah. And that is something that is priceless. And that's something that I've truly benefited from mm -hmm. is the resources and tools and, and advice that I've learned within this time frame. I, I joined the community in October and to, to reach that, I don't, I don't think I would have, I know for a fact that when I reached that goal without the help and support that I received from the community. That's awesome. That's awesome. So where, where, where do you see this industry going in the next two to five years? Yeah, I think now it it's saturated and people think saturation is bad, right? Depending on what it is, saturation is good because particularly in this industry, because a lot of people and kids are getting helped. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the the youth is the future. So the more we can pour into them, right, the more we're preparing them for life. And there'll be politicians, there'll be teachers, there'll be coaches, doctors, right? So like I don't mind the industry being saturated. I mean, more kids are being helped and being guided. But I think from a resource perspective, they're gonna be more mentors, right? There's gonna be more tools there's gonna be more resources for us to help our business. So I think it's gonna turn from, you know, trainers to now consultants. I think that's where this industry is gonna shift. Right now there's conferences now, there's like basketball training conferences, there's basketball training certifications. Um, I am also a part of the Gannon Baker and Phil Handy community. And they are coaches and consultants and they help coaches and trainers, mm -hmm. um, not only with business, but from a skills perspective, how to teach and how to make the game more uh, practical for the athletes that you're training. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's going to be more of that because as people uh, see success, right, from a business perspective, the more they're going to pour into other people. So I think it's going to shift there. I think there's going to be software for us. Uh, which already exists as well, but I think it's going to become even easier for us to run business. So I think it's going to really shift from training to, to more consulting to help, helping us right in the sports business. So I think it's going to be more and more companies like yourselves uh, mm -hmm. helping helping other coaches. Mm -hmm. So Misha, tell us tell us a little bit about what what, what do you look for when you bring on a new client. And how many clients are you currently working with? Yeah, so within the nine years of, of training, I've, I've coached and trained probably over a thousand kids. 
currently right now we have close to like 40 members, consistent members, like not just like drop in folks, but like people who come in consistently, um, close to 40 members in our program right now. And um, yeah, that that's, that's, that's where we are at the moment. Obviously it's going to grow as we continue to be more intentional about what we do. Um, but yeah. Okay. And what, what do you look for when you bring on a new client? Yeah. So the first thing is a call. Like that's our process is um, if someone inquires, right, about our training, what we do is we say, hey, okay, let's set up a call. And then on the call, we ask them certain questions, right? And some of the questions can vary from, do you have experience training? Do you currently play on a team? And, you know, what are some things that you're, if you do, if you have played on a team or you play on one at the moment, what what's some feedback, right? So really just getting information because information allows us to create a plan. So once we ask those questions, then we have a clear picture on the athlete and the needs of the athlete. Mm -hmm. So we can go from there. And then we do an evaluation, right? It's, it's, it's essentially like an interview process, right? Where mm -hmm. like you go in for the job, you, you do a phone interview and then you come in, right? For the live interview. So yeah. that's really how we, we you know, pre-board, onboard our athletes to our program. Mm -hmm. so talk 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 to us a little bit about the importance of getting on that on that call with the parent yeah so you you understand where the kids are coming from in terms of their experience mm -hmm. you understand how serious the parents and the kids are about training there's been times where you know I've been on a call and you know a zoom call and I would specifically have things set up for the call and some parents you know, don't abide by those expectations. And so you, then you understand, okay, they may not be as serious about it because it could be a, a babysitting scenario, right? And for yeah. us, that's not who we are, right? Yeah. So, you know, you have to really have clarity in the value that you bring to then, you know, ask certain questions uh, on those calls. And it's really important because it sets a precedence, right? A precedence, mm -hmm. it's like, we are serious about what we do. We're getting on this call because we want to get to know you. And quite frankly, we genuinely care. And to show that you genuinely care, you have to, I think it's important to get on those calls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. So talk, talk to us a little bit, because a lot of coaches that are in basketball uh, work with a lot of clients that aren't very committed. So they either show up late, they don't show up at all, they're late on payments, so how would you in your business deal with a client that, shall we say, is a bad client? Yeah. What's, talk to us a little bit about your process. Give coaches a little bit of advice on how you can deal with that type of client. Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. So there's two things that happen. One is there's a contract. And so before anybody gets in your program, you have to have clear expectations that you can always go to. So you have to set the standard right? in an expectation. So what we do is when people sign up for a particular program, we have a contract. And within the contract, there are certain expectations that exist both from the player and the parents. And before they even come into the gym and like invest in our program, they have to sign that contract. And so that's very clear. Mm -hmm. And typically, you know, what may happen is once they read the contract, they're like, okay, maybe we should, right? Like we shouldn't do this, right? You set those expectations. And so if, if they read the contract, they sign the contract and it still happens, then right now you have to act accordingly. So for example, let's say um, a, a parent, you know, came like 15 minutes late to a session, right? And then the next thing that typically would happen is that they say, hey, you know, can we still get the full hour? And then the contract is like, if you're late, we, we have that's the time frame, right? And so those sessions don't roll over, right? So there's certain things that you can put in place that eliminate those things from happening. And then from a payment perspective, right? You have to structure the business in the way that you would want to get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and that has to be very clear. And one thing that I learned from the community was 
you know, in terms of, you know, how to structure that is like, okay, well, you have to have an expectation. If you want to get paid by cash, you have to set this deadline, this date. Um, or if you, if you're getting strictly paid online, you have to set this date and this deadline, or there's so many softwares and platforms that exist where you can set those up in advance, but it's important to have integrity. And so it's important to let parents know how, how it's structured. So there's no surprises. There's no payments taken out with, without parents knowing, right? So it's like having integrity and being really clear on how your business works, how it's set up and being clear on your standards. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like something that I learned from the community and something that like is really, really important is having those expectations. Awesome. So talk to us a little bit about your sales and marketing process. How do you sell and market your business? Yeah. So what I've done in the past is I've had lawn signs mm -hmm. in the area. So I've put, it was literally me physically like going <laughs> to different stop signs and like putting lawn signs around. And with yeah. that process in some local areas, you have to get approval for that. So it's not just like putting lawn signs anywhere because they will take I've learned from my mistake where like I will put lawn signs out without approval from like the township or the area or the county yeah. and I would ride by that same stop sign and it's gone so I <laughs> spent money on this marketing tool that could have worked great but I didn't get approval for it first so that's something list somebody for somebody listening that's something that they can like just take into account if you're doing that I yeah. think that has been really helpful uh in the past I've I've gone to um, games and I've been able to talk to parents and you know once you're like talking to the game and you're like no don't do that and you're, you're coaching on the sidelines sometimes parents are like oh you know what you're talking about where did you play and then it, it, it starts from there mm -hmm. but the biggest marketing tool ever and the most successful the thing that really always helps is is referrals like that is I would say 90 percent of marketing for us is our parents mm -hmm. and once you give great value once parents are seeing results right once they're they're experiencing hey this 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 is working what i'm investing in is working mm -hmm. they're going to tell other people about your program it, it, it happens all the time mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't ask like we we don't ask for referrals and it literally happens because of the value that we provide for our athletes yeah. So that should always be at the forefront of any person looking to run a training business, any coach, like you have to be providing value, right? It can't be just stuff that you're looking up on, on YouTube and thinking it works for everybody. You have to have a customized training experience for these athletes. It's so important because mm -hmm. every player is not the same. Yeah. Um, right. So once you're giving value and you really understand the player, parents are really appreciate that. And the way they show appreciation is by referrals. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Nice. Cool. So where do you see your business in the next five years from now? Yeah. It's so funny that question because a lot of people don't even know what they're doing tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to think about five years. But if I could answer the question, I think one, it would be to definitely expand in other in other cities. I think mm -hmm. what we do is really awesome. Uh, we we really are changing and transforming lives. Um, we have so many athletes who never played basketball before, and then they try out for their team for the first time. They're taking risks. They're developing confidence, and so I think every you know athlete all over should should develop those tools. I think it's so important. So mm -hmm. I would love to to take what we do on the road. Um, and then the big goal, uh, our dream goal would be a facility to have a space where we can have flexibility in our program and where our kids can have a home, uh, right, to learn, to develop as people, to build connections, relationships. And our big thing, like I said, what we pride ourselves on is community. So if we can create a community space for a program, that would be that would be awesome. That's really the 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 dream goal that we have is mm -hmm. to, to create a home for the families in our program. That's awesome. Love that. So I've got one last question for you. Now, Ben and myself, we talk to coaches every single day. Um, and some coaches end up joining our program. Other coaches uh, don't for, for reasons. It might be they don't trust what we do. 
They haven't got enough information. But question for you, when you invested into our program, what? how, how quickly did you get a return in, on investment? Oh, wow. So it happened twice, actually. So first was the Acceleration Community Program. Mm -hmm. And um, so within two days, I uh, was able to book a team training uh, contract, right, with a local team. So two days after... I invested in a, the community acceleration program. I'm, I got that, you know, I'm, I got my return on my investment right away. Mm -hmm. Two days. Two days. Literally same thing happened when I got one-on-one -on -one coaching from you guys. So mm -hmm. I invested, this was like right before Thanksgiving and there was a promo going out about one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I knew that goal was coming up. It was like near, I was like, I, I know I'm going to get it if I just get one-on-one -on -one intentional time. So I would say probably three days after um, another. So a lot of it was the team training. Mm -hmm. And those are other ways to um, generate revenue in the training business is teams, mm -hmm. right? Building relationships with teams. Once you build relationships with teams, you build relationships with new parents who could be a part of your program. So a lot mm -hmm. of our members that are in our program now are from teams, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it it literally not even a week, right? Like <laughs> after the investment, and I know people listening are like, "That can't be real. It can't be true." Mm -hmm. But you got to put the work in. Like yeah. you can't receive the information and think that the universe is just gonna be like, "All right, mm -hmm. let me give you fifty clients. You get a hundred k tomorrow." Like you have to literally like do the work. There were times when I've had like six to seven calls with parents in a day right and eventually mm -hmm. once you grow you can sort of like I said outsource those things where you're not exhausted mm -hmm. but it's it's literally it's literally the work that you put in you have to apply the information that you that you're given mm -hmm. for this to to work yeah completely agree yeah cool Misha well uh thank you for jumping on uh, now, if any coach wants to reach out to you or wants to connect with you, what is the best way to do that? Sure. I would say through Instagram uh, at ProBound Training. So P-R-O-B-O-U-N-D training. Mm -hmm. um, and they can send me a DM and just say interview just so I know, you know, it was from here. And then I can thank you for making that connection. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they can reach out to me from there. Ask me any questions. I'm still learning um, and I'm learning through experience and like I said, mentorship. So mm -hmm. if I can, if, you know, we can, if they can learn one thing from this interview would be mentorship. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most viable thing you can have in life. Every, every person needs a coach, needs somebody, right. Who has been there before who can help them along the way. That's awesome. Perfect. And what we'll do is we'll add that to the bottom of the video so coaches can reach out to you or follow your follow what you're doing. Awesome. And follow your journey. Thank you. Thank you for All having right. me too. I appreciate it. All right, Misha. Well, hopefully I can bring you on in 12 months from now. See where you are. Hopefully you've doubled uh, your goal. Yeah. And uh, we can see where you are. I know that you work really hard because I see you all the time in the program, engaging. So keep up the great work and I know you're going to, you're going to 10x your business. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. I appreciate it. As long as you're adding value and you're making a significant impact, you will do well in this industry, but that should be at the forefront of everybody's mind is making sure you're, you're changing lives and making an impact. Absolutely. Okay, Misha. Well, thank you for coming on and uh, we'll connect very soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you later. See ya.